All right, I'm Chief Lark. I'm going to continue on with the training for active shooter, active threat awareness. I wanted to begin this portion of the training with child-related gun violence and school shooting facts. Each day, 12 children die from gun violence in America. Another 32 are shot and injured. Guns are the leading cause of death among American children and teens. One out, one out of 10 gun deaths are age 19 and younger. In fact, firearm deaths occur at a rate more than five times higher than drownings. Since Columbine in 1999, more than 338,000 students in the U.S. have experienced gun violence at school. There were more school shootings in 2022 than in any year since Columbine. This mirrored America's broader rise in gun violence as it emerged from the pandemic. However, U.S. Department of Homeland Security research shows that if we know the signs of gun violence, we are able to re prevent them and reverse the trend. In 2022, 34 students and adults died while more than 43,000 children were exposed to gunfire at school. That's about how to stop school shootings and other violence. An estimated 4.6 4 million American children live in a home where at least one gun is kept, loaded and unlocked. These improperly stored weapons have contributed to school shootings, suicides, and the deaths of family members, including infants and toddlers. I'd like to share a personal story with you um, about a family member who had access to an unlock and unsecure weapon and shot and killed himself. My 12 year old nephew, two years ago, um, was a victim of a suicide because a family member did not store and safely secure their weapon. And we only learn about tragedies, and I'm sharing this with you to maybe help prevent other tragedies from happening. And I'm sure many of you have experienced or could share some stories about similar incidents in your families. But we'll move on. Nearly half of our parents with a weapon in this in the home wrongly believe their children don't know where a gun is stored. Safe storage of firearms prevent tragedies. In four out of five school shootings, at least one other person had knowledge of the attacker's, attacker's plan but failed to report it. In a comprehensive school shooting study, the Secret Service and Department of Education found that 93% of school shooters planned the attack in advance. When people see the signs and get help, we can end school shootings. Almost all mass school shooters share threatening or concerning messages or images. More than 75% raised concern from other prior to the attacks. Bystanders saw warning signs in most documented active shooter cases. Truly, you can prevent school shootings when you know the signs. Facts about how gun violence impacts America's most vulnerable. Desperately and disproportionately impacted children and adults face higher risk of being victimized by gun violence. Despite economic factors, gender, racial, mental health conditions, or sexual orientation, everyone has the right to be safe in their classroom and communities. Children living in poverty Urban, urban or rural are more likely to die due to gun violence than their more affluent peers. About one out of five gay and lesbian youth have been threatened or injured with a weapon on school property. Black youth are four times more likely to be killed with guns than their white peers. Children of color are far more likely to experience campus gun violence. It's more than twice as much for Hispanic students and over three times as much for black students. 
The majority of individuals with diagnosed mental illness do not engage in violence against others. Lastly, it must be remembered that 90% of teenagers killed in an act of violence were girls. In the next section of training, we're going to talk about the Buffalo Public School safety and security reunification process. All schools currently have a reunification process in place, but as I understand it, it it's utilized for gas leaks, maybe a flooding in the school or a smaller scale event. This reunification process that we're going to talk about is for an active shooter event or a major critical incident within the school. And it also involves police and fire emergency medical personnel with the Buffalo Public Schools working in conjunction with those partners. When an incident occurs, your priorities are going to be for student and staff safety and well-being, student and staff location and condition, successfully starting the recovery process. Objectives, every student, staff members, and visitors accounted for. Every student in the school's custody successfully reunited with the parent or guardian. When reunification might be needed, Reunification is the safe, orderly reunion of parents and guardians with their children because the school has been evacuated or closed. Reunification may be appropriate when the school has been closed or evacuated due to a major fire, gas leak, hazardous material spill, flash flooding, active threat, or other act of violence, bomb threat, etc. Reunification occurs when events at the school or in the neighborhood demand students are physically returned to parents. In the event of criminal activity, injury or death, additional time may be needed for law enforcement interviews or crisis counseling. The reunification site. Capacity reunification sites must be large enough to accommodate not only the students and staff of your largest schools, but also their parents and guardians. At some of the reunification type incidents that we've had in the past, parents may not have been allowed into the school buildings, may have kept them separate. But in a larger scale event with involving an active shooter or any other type of major critical incident, it may be necessary to bring parents into the same building, but ensuring that they're kept in a separate room. The site must also have sufficient parking to allow for the many cars that parents will have and as well as the other emergency staff that will be in the same building. The site must have the ability to uh, control the perimeter, usually done by law enforcement. It may require a memorandum of understanding with the site owners for the use of the property. It should specify the scope of use, the duration, cleanup, property loss mitigation, etc. The, the site should also have multiple buildings and rooms. When possible, there should be multiple buildings on the site that can be utilized in order to keep students separate from their parents until they reunify. Room considerations. Command location. Command location is going to include a command post for law enforcement and for fire and for emergency personnel. Student stage, staging. This will be where students are held after being received at the reunification site. Parent waiting area. This is a holding area for parents. Interview rooms and notification rooms. Parent student reunification area. The reunification process in a nutshell should establish a parent check-in location. Deliver the students to the student staging area beyond the field of vision of parents and guardians. Should also include greeters 
who direct the parents and guardians to the parent check-in location and help them understand the process. Parents, guardians complete reunification cards and check-in. Runners, who recover the students from the student staging area. Controlled lines of sight allow for communication and other issues to be handled with diminished drama or anxiety. Medical or an investigative contingencies are anticipated. When it's all said and done, successful reunification is based on pre-planning and integration of first responders personnel. The Unified Command System. As an incident evolves, first responders typically establish their own incident command. So, for example, law enforcement, fire, they have an incident command system already in place. You'll have one person that's in charge and it will be a host of other individuals that they were they will delegate responsibilities to in order to make sure that the event is maintained and contained and everyone is carrying out their tasks. While the responding department or agency will assume primary incident command, districts and schools remain responsible for reunifying their students with the parents and guardians. Unified command should include all stakeholders in the incident. In the event of a critical incident on a school campus, Unified Command will include police, fire, medical, school administration, emergency management, etc. Reunification Team Mobilization The reunification team will be mobilized once the site has been identified. The reunification kit containing all required signage, forms, tablets, supplies, etc. will be delivered to the reunification site. Now, Buffalo Public Schools have already designated certain individuals to take this equipment with them upon leaving the school. So that will be going to the site with the um, personnel from the schools. Prior to the site being set up, a law enforcement team will sweep the site for any hazards, IEDs, which are incendiary explosive device, etc. Classroom evacuation. Once it has been deemed safe to do so, students will be escorted by staff to a pre-designated location within walking distance. It may not be within walking distance and they may need to be transported via bus. Student and staff transportation. The transportation department is responsible for arranging transportation to get the students and any staff to the designated reunification site. Reunification stations. Team staging is the check-in process for all district personnel in order to deploy resources where needed most. Parent parking parent check-in. It's the first contact with parents as they arrive at reunification. Greeters will meet with parents and staff and will check them in by completing a form or electronic sign-in. Student assembly staging area where student staff will wait. Parent waiting area. Parent student reunification is a separate area where students and parents will be brought in to re reunify and complete the checkout process. Victim assistance group, mental health counselors and victim advocates will begin the recovery process and make parent notifications. Missing persons liaison, school liaisons to work with investigators in identifying and locating students that have either self-evacuated or been transported to hospitals or victims still in the school. Other resources needed, transportation, traffic control, message boards, public information officer, uniformed security personnel, child welfare, health department, Counselors, medical, investigative contingencies. 
This is a photo of the Incident Command Organization chart just to give you an idea of the layout and the structure of an Incident Command system. And the goal of all of this hard work that everyone puts in is to be successful in the reunification process. Best practices and lessons learned from others. Parent and guardian notification is a priority. Proper outer perimeter is impacted school. Five mile radius is recommended. Law enforcement takes care of this. Constant communication with all stakeholders. The public information officers should be engaged and should be putting out regularly scheduled updates as often as possible. Change of role of the principal as the school's incident commander. Utilize sites other than another school. Primary, secondary, and third assignments for each role in the event someone's not there on the day of an event, active shooter event, you have a second person and a third person as a backup. You have a district team and you exercise drills and training and debrief after the drills and trainings to improve any flaws that you, that you recognize. Parent letter that sets, sets expectations and account for special needs students. Have time of day contingencies. Controlled area and security sweeps done by law enforcement. Have reunification kits available. Unified command system will be utilized. Exercise control lines of sight to allow for communication and other issues to be handled without diminished drama or anxiety. Utilize technology, Wi-Fi access. Effective procedures, school critical incidents response checklists followed and plan for custodial issues. Make sure that any parent picking up a child has proper ID and that if necessary, whenever possible, you can confirm any custodial issues so as not to release children to parents who are in guardians that they are not supposed to be released to. And plan for Murphy. Things will go wrong, just know it and just do the best that you can to prepare for it and utilize the map checklist, which, which will be covered in the next slide. The map checklist includes the evacuation routes, the incident command post locations, incoming district responder routes. What this means is when you have a critical incident, you have a command post. You're gonna have police personnel coming into the route, into the area. You're gonna have fire coming into the area. You're going to have medical personnel coming in, and you're also going to have egress for those vehicles. It may be necessary, obviously, for medical personnel to get victims out of the area and get to local hospitals. You'll have parents coming in and out. That's all going to be included in this whole staging area, which could be very large. You have a landing zone. You need a, an area for the media to be gathered and they need to be contained in that specific area. Again, police will be taking care of designating that area and ensuring that media stays in, in, in that space. You have reunification signage locations, parent check-in location, possible neighborhood evacuation perimeter, sexual offender locations, security perimeter, and outer perimeter. Some of the items in a reunification kit are signage, sign boards, traffic cones, check-in forms and tablets, lanyards with assignment cards, checklists for coordinators, caution tape, pens, clipboards, tissue papers, coloring books, markers and colored pencils, and movies for the students. This is an example of a parent letter. The Buffalo Public Schools already has a letter, I'm sure, but I just 
use this as another example of the correspondence that would be sent out to the parents that would describe what would happen in the unification, reunification process. I'd like to thank you for being an attentive audience this afternoon for this very, very um, critical training segment on active shooter, active threat awareness. This is just one of the first trainings that we will be providing for you going forward. This is a very evolving subject and we will constantly be doing research for best practices to see what other school communities are utilizing and uh, looking forward to bringing additional trainings to you when we can. I'd like to thank Dana Estrada for assisting me today in providing this information. She does it with the community uh, on an ongoing basis and is a great resource. If you need to schedule something in communities and churches, she is, she's an awesome person to reach out to. I've provided my contact information, Executive Director Fred Wagstaff, who assists me in security, as well as Aaron Young, who's the Chief of School Resource Officers in the Buffalo Police Department. We are going to be partnering with the Buffalo Police Department, the Fire Department, to provide drills, safety drills on active shooters. So stay tuned for more information and much more training in the days to come. Thank you.